I think given the limited resources available in the world, given climate change, given water scarcity, given land availability, there are so many issues where we're limited in resources that the great disruption will come um, because we're going to be forced in the economy uh, to change the way we produce a lot of activities, a lot of things. And therefore the opportunity of course is to replace existing industries with the bioeconomy. Um, whether energy, whether food, protein, there are so many technological processes that we can replace with biological sources. It's a very, very large industry. I think one of the opportunities for them is to really engage in sustainability as an opportunity. They kind of use it in the marketing example saying, yes, we, we can help solve sustainability problems, but they don't always come across as really passionate and believing in the sustainability issue. And I think that for this industrial biotech in particular, there is a lot of opportunity to have a very, very positive impact on society. And that's gonna be very engaging for the staff uh, and, the, and the investors of those companies. But also, once you have that belief and passion, then engaging with stakeholders in the NGO community, in the public, in policy makers, because you're part of the solution, I think is a very different approach to the strategy. And I think that idea that we, we can help fix this is a very motivating idea. It, it's really interesting here at Europe Bio, like how when I talk to the smaller companies, the disruptor companies, they're so passionate about the issues. They talk immediately about sustainability, the great opportunity to make the world a better place. When you talk to a large company, they talk about the market and the opportunity and the regulatory framework, so you don't get that passion. Now, it's not that those people don't believe it, they've just, they've just kind of been trained, if you like, in their culture not to talk in that way. So I think it's, it's a matter of unleashing the enthusiasm that, that already exists inside these large companies by the leadership of those companies talking in those, in those terms and making it kind of good for the company to engage on the issues of the day. I mean, th th these large companies can do enormous, um, uh, bring enormous benefits to the world, but they don't talk like that. Uh, they, they talk as though it's just about making money, shareholder returns, you know, regulatory frameworks, etc. It's, it's sort of a boring way to talk, even though those issues are important, it's a boring way to talk about it. It's not engaging. And so I think unleashing that enthusiasm. And I think, you know, DSM, who I sit on the advisory board for DSM, is a good example. When you hear Fike Sebesma talk about these issues on sustainability, you know he believes it. And that, that permeates through the whole company in their attitude. And I think it's the human nature of that, yeah, is, is that people want to work in companies that are doing something good in the world. They want to feel passionate about their work. You know, a, a large company doesn't want its people to go to work and then go home and be good citizens. It wants them to be good citizens at work. And so unleashing that opportunity, I think, is really important. When you work in the NGO sector, you know that your, your, your organisation exists for the purpose of making the world a better place. So of course it's inspiring. It doesn't mean they're always right, it doesn't mean they don't make mistakes, but the point is that you know what the, what the motivation behind it is. I think one of the things that I've observed so far is this very, very healthy connection between small disruptive companies and large old companies. That it's actually, this, this is a sector, an industry, where there's going to be enormous uh, disruptive forces, but there's also a lot of benefit to be brought to the table by very large old companies. And having them connected together here, I think, is really, really useful, because they can form those relationships, but also learn from each other. What are the benefits of capital? Yes, very large for a large company. What are the benefits of passion, entrepreneurship, and enthusiasm you get from the small disruptive players?